What a crazy March. If you've been paying attention to any news, you would have been hearing about coronavirus, but not only that, but about the markets crashing. Now, a few weeks ago, I published a video about staying calm during crazy markets. But what I've seen is that with the steep drops, there's increasing amount of anxiety. And this kind of goes to show that there are a lot of people out there that are overly invested in one thing. Now, if you are overly invested in stocks, if you're overly invested in real estate, if all you have is Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, this video is made for you. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is how to kind of think about asset allocation. But in easier layman terms, it's really how to build a solid investment team. What I'm going to be covering is why does it matter? What are these asset classes or teammates? When does it matter? And finally, how to get started. Hey guys, it's Sunmin here and welcome back to Your Money Game. Now today I'm going to be talking a little bit more about this thing called asset allocation. Now it might sound a little technical, a little scary, but I'm going to use a very simple metaphor to tell you about it. Now if you've ever heard of Lord of the Rings, you would have roughly heard about these few terms. One is a hobbit, like the star of the, the show. They're really trying to get that one ring to Mount Doom so they can kind of throw it in, right? And in that journey, they had to rely on help from all these different races. Uh, you've got the dwarves, you've got the elves, you've got the humans. So if you think about investing from that perspective, if you're that hobbit and you're really trying to get that ring of yours to the end goal of financial freedom, what you're going to do is rely on the help of all these different types of assets or different kind of races. Now to illustrate things very simply, I want you to imagine that if you're that hobbit, and your hobbit friends are the safest type of people. So your safest type of investment would be like a hobbit. If you have a moderate risk kind of uh, friend, it would be something like the humans. And then if you've got another race that's a little bit riskier, you can think of them like the elves. I want you to think about your investments in that way. You've got safer assets, you've got moderately risky assets, and then you've got riskier assets. Now before I go on, I want to talk to you about why it's so important to build this right team. Why is asset allocation so important for us? The first big reason is that your overall team survives in the long run if one of them falls. Now in the recent markets, stocks have already fell by 25% in less than one month. If you're looking at Bitcoin, it fell by more than half of its value in a month and a half back in 2017 and 2018. For those of you who are invested in real estate, if you're around my age in your 30s, you might have lived through a golden age. But what a lot of people forgot is that during the Asian financial crisis back in 97, property prices actually went down. Now, for those of us living and growing up in Malaysia and Singapore, we are almost taught that property, you can't really go wrong with it. Finally, if all you're doing is holding on to cash because you're very comfortable with your hobbit friends, unfortunately, inflation is gonna eat that up. And if that's all you're doing with it, you're gonna wake up in 20, 30 years and the value of that money hasn't really grown at all. The second reason why asset allocation is super important is just for your mental health. Now, with losing money, nobody likes it, but what a lot of people don't realize is the amount of stress that's building up slowly inside. For some of us, it's already bubbling up. On top of that, you'll wanna sleep well at night. So managing all those emotions is really important. What I'm going to do is provide you a link below from Vanguard that has a bit of research that talks about how 88% of your experience in investing is really down to asset allocation. What that means is that the volatility that you experience, it really boils down to getting your asset allocation right. Now the third reason why it's so important is that you don't want to be stressed out to the point where you end up making emotional decisions. So a lot of people right now are beginning to panic because the markets have dropped so low. And what they end up doing is they end up selling. And for some people, it's just purely emotional. But for others, it could be a genuine situation where they are backed into a corner and they're forced into a situation where they have to sell, not because of a good reason, but because they're forced to and they need the money. Now let's walk through the different type of asset classes or the different kind of teammates you can recruit for your financial journey. Now your safest teammate are the hobbits, right? And that's cash and that's bonds. So those type of assets tend to be rock solid. Things won't really go wrong with them. But because of that, they are able to only give you very limited returns. There are some products that are what they call high interest savings accounts, but those also have a catch. Usually they involve you needing to do more with the bank, whether it's spending more on a credit card, whether it's buying investment products. 
but at the same time, they also have limitations of how much you can actually earn back from them. But that's the trade-off. You get safety, but at the same time, you sacrifice returns. The returns on cash and bonds tend to go between 0.05% at the very minimum up to about 1-ish, 2-ish percent. Next in line are your friends, the humans, and they are a little bit more on the moderate side when it comes to risk, and it's usually real estate. The alternative to physical real estate is buying REITs, R-E-I-T-S. What happens is that they tend to be baskets of different properties that you're buying, and the returns that you're looking from that are usually a mix. Uh, you're looking at the value of that thing grow, but at the same time, real estate as well as REITs tend to provide you with ongoing cash. Now, the final teammate in this journey are the elves, and they are considered the highest risk of these assets, and they are called stocks. To think about the risks involved in stocks, it's really thinking about like how risky is a business. Many different factors affect it, and if you're an investor in one of them, those are the same kind of risks that you take on. What a lot of people don't realize is that if you are buying stocks individually and you think that, oh, I'm buying different type of companies, so that's why I'm diversified, so I'm safe, right? But unless you are Warren Buffett, who is a pro at picking the right type of stocks, and what happens is that when the market goes down, collectively as an asset, they are all affected. Now, as an asset class, there are actually very few things that outperform the stock market when it comes to overall returns. And oftentimes, people quote numbers between 10 to 15% over extremely long-term periods. So you might have a wizard popping up here and there in your portfolio, and they take the form of certain things, for example, cryptocurrency, uh, P2P lending. So these are not recognized formally as an asset class. If you're a professional that knows what you're doing, power to you. But because all these assets are less proven, nobody really knows what's going to happen to it in the long term. The simple way to think about this is that if you're presented with a option of what to invest in, the higher the reward tends to equate to a higher risk. So be careful when you're putting together all these different teammates for the long term. Before I go on, if you've not already done so, click on that subscribe button as well as the bell so that you can get notified whenever I release a new video every Sunday. Now let's get into when does asset allocation matter. So the first thing to think about is percentages. Out of all the investable assets that you have, how much of it is allocated according to these different teammates or assets? There's a rule of thumb talked about by financial professionals that say the magic number is 110 minus your age it gives you the number that you should be allocating in terms of percentage towards riskier assets like stocks. So for example, let's say you are 30 years old and you've got 110 minus 30 that suggests that you should have about 80% of your investments parked in stocks. But a lot of times it comes down to what are you personally comfortable with in terms of those allocations. The younger you are, again, the higher amount of risk that you can take over the long term. So that means you can safely allocate 80, 90 plus even 100% of your assets into equities if you're very comfortable with that. If you're in the middle of the game, you've got a young family, you're a little bit older, you're supporting your parents and you have more liabilities, uh, what happens is people tend to de-risk and that results in about 50 to 70% of your assets invested in stocks. And then the closer you get towards retirement, say in your 50s or your 60s, people tend to really dial down the risk. The second point I'm going to make in terms of when to think about it is actually when times are great. Now, if you're somebody who's really making a lot of money, getting very successful in doing this one thing, that's actually the time when you are at the highest risk. What happens is that we tend to become overly confident after we've made a few successful money moves. That results in us overly allocating too much money into the one particular asset class. Now, this is something that I've seen back in Malaysia where so many people were making tons of money when it, in terms of properties during the early days. So people just kept buying more and more properties. But what happened is they put so much money in, they've locked themselves into these long-term loans. But then now as an asset class, properties are not doing very well. It doesn't mean that it will stagnate forever. But what happens is they're losing valuable time having all that money locked up and servicing these properties. It's a tough ask, but when you're doing well, that's when you should snap yourself out of it and think about what are the different asset classes that you should be trying to diversify in. Finally, here are some simple steps to get started in asset allocation and building that right team. Step number one is really for you to do an audit. If you put together all the money that you have for long-term investments, what are the different buckets that they're in right now? And then you want to think about your time horizon. If you have more time available to you to invest, 
what you want to do is think about taking a little bit more risk towards the long term. So thinking about your short, medium and long term needs helps you to think about safe, moderate and riskier assets that you want to try and allocate. So I really want to credit Ray Dalio for introducing me to this concept of asset allocation. I found myself really taken in by the idea that you can get reasonable returns but at the same time managing your downside risks. So thanks to Ray Dalio, that's how I've built my own portfolio and it's helping me sleep a little bit better at night during these crazy times. So if you have any questions about asset allocation, I'm going to leave a link below for you to check out and read up some more. Uh, but if you want to ask me a question about how I'm approaching my own asset allocation, please feel free to comment. So thanks for watching. If you've gotten any value out of this, give me that like, subscribe and click on that notification button as well so you can get notified when I release a new video every Sunday and share it with a friend who you think might need a little bit of help in building that investment portfolio in the long term. So thanks and keep playing your own game.